build a membership, make money while you sleep, travel the world and live this gorgeous lifestyle that everybody promotes. Now, the reality of building a membership is slightly different. I build up mine to 20, 30,000 a month and I want to share with you my story of what it takes to build this kind of membership and run it day to day. So that you, my friend, can do it too. My name is Darius Lucas and on this channel we talk everything marketing, copywriting and digital business. And if you want to receive more of these tutorials, don't forget to click like and subscribe because every week I release a new video. So now let's get started. I'd like to share with you all how I build my own membership site because I feel that's probably the thing that I've done in my life that brought me the most freedom, the most joy because once you have a membership and if it's successful and mine isn't even like massive, it's not a gazillion of dollars, but it's enough to sustain me and a small team. It has allowed me to do projects that I've always wanted to do. It allowed me to travel the world, train as a samurai in Japan, teach writing therapy workshops around the world, and do things that you couldn't do if you didn't have this type of freedom. So I wanna share my journey, how I set up membership site and how it's grown and what it is. So first the beginning and how it all started. You know, I was training as a theater director and I had sort of finished my degree and I was doing fairly well in that path, both the script writer, but I was starting to understand that that path was not gonna give me what I wanted and that was mainly autonomy, freedom, not be dependent on anybody because I'm a very, well, independent individual. <laughs> I, I hate if anybody tells me what to do, and that's my weakness. So, you know, I already sort of felt and sensed that, for example, being a theatre director was fairly difficult because as I started, as a young theatre director, you had to work, you know, as an assistant for at least 10 years in London before you got you know, any kind of a major gig. Simultaneously, whilst I was studying, I met somebody who didn't speak good English and they were Lithuanian and I'm Lithuanian. And they said to me, well, could you teach me English? And I was like, well, sure I can. I mean, I needed cash, I was a student. And then she was like, well, I'll get some of my friends. And I was like, okay, well, let's charge each of you a certain amount of money and I'll do it. So we started doing that and obviously I never thought in a million years that that was the beginning of my business. I always thought of it as a, something to just make an extra buck whilst I was studying and then later on obviously I was gonna build a career. I never thought that I would end up for example now like today uh, I'm spending a couple of months in Italy and I'm renting this beautiful um, gorgeous flat in the middle of nowhere. But to cut the long story short, I started teaching that group and then they referred me to other people. I started teaching them. So by the time that I had graduated my theater directing degree, by the time I had come to realization that the whole path in the arts was not my path, I had already had this clientele and I wasn't making a lot of money, but it just enough to sustain myself. So I, I decided to then move to Bali, Indonesia. At the time, which was 2013, not many people taught online really, especially languages. But I took a risk and I said to myself, okay, I'm now gonna move to Asia and I am gonna live the life that I w always wanted to live. I was kind of ready that majority of my students would say, thanks, I bid you farewell. But what happened was, was quite the opposite, they said, could you teach us online? And very honestly, I hadn't even thought at that point that I could teach somebody online. Like Zoom wasn't around, like there were no proper software besides Skype video calls. So I said, yeah, sure. I had like out of 20 students that I had at the time, eight signed up for one-to-one -one classes and I moved to Bali. Again, not a business. I'm just trading my time for money, selling my hours. There is no future of scalability of a life of freedom besides of being very modest and well, it's the very best sort of living in Bali, you know, which was pretty good at the time as well. At that point, I started working with, with this entrepreneur education company as well. And I started learning everything that I could about entrepreneurship. I was devouring everything. Like I was reading books, I was listening to every lecture, every class that was taught as part of the company. I was talking to all the clients of the company because I really wanted to understand how do people start businesses. And I realized that the easiest thing for me was to turn what I was already doing into a business. So I thought and I said to myself, okay, how can we scale this? And by that point that I asked this question, I remember I was in Japan 
and Japan, as we all know, is a fairly expensive country. I realized I couldn't afford most of the things. I said to myself, what can I do in order to be able to afford it? What would I need to do in my business? Obviously, I could have maybe asked a question like, what other business could I have invented? Possibly I could have invented something else and it could have been worth now like a couple million dollars. Sure, but I was very realistic. I was like, you know, I have these clients, I have this skill set. This is a no brainer. This is fast. What can I do? And I had this idea instead of teaching one to one or in groups, and instead of these people paying me like 20 pounds an hour, I could charge the same amount of money per month and create a monthly membership and record a class or two and just upload it. I want to be able to scale this thing because I want my freedom. So freedom was this guiding principle of mine. I don't want to be reporting to anybody. I want to have my own gig that I can rely on. I want to be able to be free. These were the principles. And I was in my mid-20s and obviously as somebody in their 20s, you know, you are courageous, you are seeking freedom. That's what I think memberships are, they are freedom. So anyway, I decided to do that and I decided to launch the membership. So I first did the founders launch, which means that I took my list, which by then was, I think around 200 people. I emailed the list and I said, you know, I'm launching this thing. I first did 20 pounds and then I reduced it down to 10 pounds. But I said, you know, it was like at the end, 10 pounds a month to have access to this membership. And 20 people signed up immediately. And I was very blown away by that realization that suddenly I was making 200 pounds and only working one hour to upload that one video as opposed to working 10 hours in order to make the same 200. For me, that was an aha moment as Oprah Winfrey says, I realized something. So what I then did, I continued emailing the list. I continued then promoting the membership and it very slowly grew to the point of like 300, 400 people. And then I, thought I'm gonna take this money now and I'm gonna hire a virtual assistant who's now gonna help me with managing the community and I'm not gonna teach online anymore so I'm gonna just have this passive thing that I'm gonna grow. So here I was having my first virtual assistant barely able to afford it. Like honestly, I was probably paying 70% of what I was making to the assistant. But I knew that that was my investment because obviously I had a job and that's why I always say, um, never quit your job until you build another gig for yourself that is paying you because this is the worst thing that people can do is like quit their job and expect that suddenly they're gonna build up their business. By that point, I realized that we could be running webinars and you know getting people to watch a webinar and buy a membership through the webinar. Again, the popular opinion always has been that you have to have high ticket that you know there's no point of running a webinar and selling some something for like 10 15 20 dollars but at the same time when i was starting out even 15 dollars was a substantial amount of money for me and i thought you know well if i get another if i get a thousand people at 15 dollars that's pretty good right so we ran webinars for a couple of years and we build up quite a substantial database and then we reached around 700 members which then allows me to start hiring and my first proper hire besides the VA was then a business manager because I wanted somebody to really be in charge of the entire business and leave myself this whole strategic creative side of things. So this is how it started and we had a small team which actually still runs the business until today. The only thing that changed is that we built up the team of around 10 teachers who then also started teaching group classes. So just to sort of like recap, so we went then, you know, from webinars to increasing the amount of numbers to growing team. Okay, given that the light is not the best, let's continue the story in another setting. Okay, so the setup has changed and we covered pretty much my entire journey of building my own membership site. Now, I'd love to share with you these five principles that will help you build your own membership if you choose to do so. Now, also down below, there is a quiz that I've created for everybody that wants to build their own membership business. And it gives you your own personalized roadmap and the actual steps that you need to take in order to create this type of business. So the first principle that I'd like to talk to you about is content and the idea that less is more. So a lot of people that want to start a membership site, they think that the more content they have, 
the better. But they do not really think about this whole idea of your student's journey and really mapping out what are the steps in the curriculum in the learning pathway of your student. So a lot of the time what you find is a lot of content thrown on the side you join the membership and you have no idea where to start and where to finish. And this was certainly one of the mistakes that I made at the start because I thought, well, the more the better. So when you start your own membership site, you want to be reverse engineering the process. You want to be thinking, what do I want my students to learn and how can I get them to that point through the series of videos, articles, audios, whichever format you choose. Now, another principle that I've come up with is that you do not have to be perfect and you mustn't be perfect when you start out because that's the number one killer of your business and your membership because we all desire to look perfect on camera we care how we sound whether even it's a written piece of content and we overthink everything and that perfection kills progress what i really discovered along the way that you can fail and you can create imperfect pieces of content and you can make mistakes so when I produced at least the first 30 classes, I would say, I was working by myself. I filmed it, I had to edit it myself, I had to upload it myself, and also had other projects and a job as well. So those video classes were pretty bad, to be honest. And a few years down the line, I had refilmed them. But I had started with those imperfect, PowerPointy, Google Doc looking classes where I just simply sat in front of the camera and I just screen shared my screen and I just wrote whatever I was teaching. It wasn't the best, but it got me started and it helped me first focus on getting members, on growing the membership. And once I reached the mark of 500 students, I could then go back with my team now and revisit the, the whole content and restructure it and refilm it. So do not let this inner critic that says that everything has to be perfect take the better of you. Principle number three, community is everything. And this is what I've learned along the way. If you nurture your community, if you gradually grow and improve your product together with your community, they will stick around and they will be grateful. As one of my mentors had once said, the people come to you for knowledge, for the product, but then they stay for the community. So if you manage to create a powerful, friendly, supportive community, a lot of your students will stay there just for that. For example, in my membership, we had multiple students who have stayed with us for like three to five years after they had learned English because they loved the community and they stay there and they buy every single product that we create because they just feel a part of this lovely family that we had created. So focus on fostering that feeling of a community, of a group of people who are there together in this little corner of the internet, building something all together. And this naturally leads us to the next principle, creating internal economy. So once you build up your community, and whether that's 100 people, 2,000 people, 5,000 people, you had created a community of buyers who are there for one purpose, one goal. So in my case, we had obviously people learning English. Then we moved on to building a community of people who wanted to learn Spanish. Now I'm building a community of people who want to build memberships, for example. So you build that sort of community. And then you build multiple tiers and multiple products. So what we had started doing, we introduced the ability for people to upgrade to classes online with teachers. So people would be able to not only log in onto our learning platform or the Facebook group, they'd be able to actually have an in-person experience and be learning in a small group. That would be one product. We then started creating multiple audiobooks that were also helping people along their learning journey. So we were very precise about where each product comes in in the person's learning journey. And so what we were noticing that there was a number of people, at least 10% of people, that would buy anything that we would create. So then that meant that we actually had created our own internal economy. And so now we have people that trust us and love us and we can go to them and say, hey, what do you want us to create for you? What would bring the most value to you? And this is what we have been doing on a regular 
basis. And now lastly, the main principle and the main benefit of having a membership is that predictable revenue equals freedom. Now, there is no such thing as really having a passive business through a membership. You'll still have to put in some work, but what it allows you is to predict your revenue. Now, once you do predict your revenue, what you can do, you can outsource, you can hire a team, you can plan your time accordingly. You don't have to work every single day to get new sales. You might even be able to completely extract yourself from the business because you'll be able to have, for example, your team or your virtual assistant running it for you. And then secondly, predictable revenue equals freedom. And this is where the best bit comes in. This is where you can be running your membership. It can be your full-time job, but it can be the kind of job that you do from anywhere in the world. And you can, for example, travel like I did to Japan and train as a samurai and not work for a month. The possibilities of having and running a membership and what it then allows you are limitless. So there's nothing more that I would encourage every business owner and every solopreneur and every copywriter to do is to think of building their membership. Now, if you want my guidance, there is a quiz down below where I give you your personalized membership roadmap. So click the link down below and also let me know whether you'd like me to make more videos about memberships, membership principles and how to grow your own. I'll see you in the next video.